Okay, guys, so there's been tons of leaks uh, for the uh, DJI Mini 3 Pro over the past few days, um, mainly because <laughs> it was accidentally published on a uh, Dutch website. So um, we know we've got a solid idea of the price now. We know um, that the uh, standalone Mini 3 Pro is going to be selling at €229, Euros, and um, this is going to translate around £700 in a sterling for the UK. Um, another thing I want to mention right at the beginning is it looks like um, the release date is likely to be May the 10th now. So that was a leak from a Jasper Ellen, so this is something that's usually quite reliable. We're pretty sure now, or we already know, that it's going to be a 24mm lens with an f-stop of 1.7. And after looking in a bit more detail, I've gone on to uh, dronedj.com where we found a few more stats about the drone. Um, I'm particularly interested in the sensor because I say it's a 1 to 1.3 inch Cosmos sensor, which is pretty big for such a small drone. And it's going to have tons of other things you can do with it. But if we combine the fact that it's a large sensor with a low aperture um, or a wide aperture, I believe this is going to be really good in low light situations. Now a bit more about the camera, it's basically looking like a Mavic Air 2 but smaller. So we've got a uh, 4K at 60 frames per second video, 48 megapixel raw photos. Um, we're also going to have a slow motion which is something I really wanted in a small drone. This is going to be something really exciting for me personally, 120 frames per second. And because it's so much like the Mavic Air 2, I'm also going to assume that it's probably still only an 8-bit and uh, not a 10-bit sensor, which is a little bit disappointing, but it's a lot to ask for in a small drone. But to make up for that a bit, it looks like we're going to have HDR video on it, which is something really good. But again, it looks like we're having raw photos and the D-Cine like flat color profile, which means we're going to be able to color grade it hopefully a lot easier than um, the Mini 2. And other similar drones, um, actually color grading is something I find very difficult for some reason with the uh, with the DJI drones. Now, as we already know, it's going to have obstacle avoidance. Uh, it's going to have three direction of obstacle avoidance. We're also going to have A pass four, which is how it basically uses the obstacle avoidance to make sure it's flying nice and smoothly. Uh, whilst it's going to be following you, we know this is going to have active track. We know this is going to have uh, pano. Uh, we're going to be able to take panoramic pictures. We're going to be able to uh, have points of interest. Uh, there's tons that this uh, that this little drone is going to be able to do. We know we're going to have OcuSync three, which is uh, one of the most reliable connections we're going to have between a drone and the controller. Um, we know the new controller has got a, um, we're going to have two of them. Uh, we have the option of two. One's going to have a built-in screen and the other one's going to be your phone. Uh, the one with the built-in screen obviously is going to have an ultra low latency and it's going to be a lot quicker and a lot more reactive. We know already we're going to have vertical shooting, so we'll be able to shoot directly up in the sky. Uh, we're going to have focus tracking, which is what I've already mentioned. Uh, master shots, which is something that's coming out on all the latest drones with obstacle avoidance that they're making now. Uh, and what we'd expect, um, digital zoom, the time lapse and the panorama shots. As I say, it is a lot like the uh, Mavic Air 2, in my opinion. Uh, something I found particularly interesting uh, was that uh, we've got two batteries. One is going to be uh, 249 grams, and we would expect to have a 34 minute maximum flight time with this. And the other will push it over the 250 gram mark. And uh, this will then give you 47 minutes uh, maximum flight time. So we're going to sacrifice the low weight, which may mean we have to fly further away from obstacles. Um, but in return, we could get the extra flight time. I'd be really interested to know uh, the different prices of the batteries. So overall, we're looking like we've got a pretty decent little drone here. Um, there's a few things, though, that um, do worry me. I personally am still going to buy this drone, um, but it is very expensive. I wouldn't really recommend this for a beginner drone purely on the price. Um, obviously, it's a great drone and it would be great for a beginner. But if you're just getting into the hobby, this is this is a big leap. And it's a lot of money to commit to something if you're not 100% sure you're keen on. But uh, if you do enjoy it, this is going to be an awesome drone to have. Uh, but as it stands, I do have two major concerns in addition to the money. Uh, the first one being, as, as you'd expect at the moment, there are no C labels on the drones uh, coming into the European market. So for the UK, that's not too bad. So basically in the UK, without the C mark, it's not too much of a big deal. Um, you will be able to fly your drone in the A0 subcategory of the open category, meaning you can fly this close to people. However, uh, 
in the European market, this is quite a big deal. I believe that legacy drones aren't going to have the same permissions. So um, it's looking like uh, this drone might be uh, just as difficult to fly uh, in certain areas as the Mavic Air 2, for example. So um, because uh, once it becomes a legacy drone, you won't be able to basically fly it um, in the A0 subcategory. So for me, this is a, this is a small concern. I say I probably still will get this drone, um, but if you're looking to travel, which this obviously looks like an amazing uh, travel drone, you are going to be limited um, on how legal this is in certain countries in the European Union. And uh, lastly, um, although it's not a big deal, um, you're not going to have uh, very many compatible like ND filters or parts for this drone from your old drones. Um, it looks at the moment like the remote won't connect to your Mavic 3 remote, or this drone won't connect to your Mavic 3 remote, for example. Um, maybe in a few months that will change, so it might be worth something uh, to wait around for and uh, see. But ultimately, um, if you're looking at getting this drone to connect it to your Mavic 3 remote, that may not work. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, is a C-Mark a big deal for you? Um, obviously, in the UK, it might not be a big deal, but um, I've just recently been traveling, which is why this video has come out a bit later than I'd have liked. Um, and uh, this would have been the perfect drone to have taken. Uh, so let me know what you think. That's it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks for all the likes and the subscribes, and I hope to see you in the next one.